Helen Hewlett, Contract Killer Narcissist As I explained in the video about Michael Haight, and if you haven't watched that, I suggest that you do, it is rare for narcissists to kill people, but amongst those people who are killed by somebody else, narcissists feature prominently, particularly when it comes to domestic violence. In this instance, we have a slightly different form of anticipated violence, which involves a contract killer. The BBC News site explains King's Lynn woman, that's a place in the United Kingdom, guilty of trying to hire hitman after fling. A woman who tried to hire a hitman to kill a former work colleague after a fling has been found guilty of soliciting murder. The suggestion of hiring a hitman, of course, is the presentation of physical violence, which is a rudimentary form of manipulation. It of itself doesn't mean that she is a narcissist, of course. There are individuals, more usually normals, who could behave in a similar way because they don't have emotional empathy or limited emotional empathy for another human being and that a perception of being slighted causes them to respond in a way, of course, most people would not respond in that way if they had been, if they'd had a fling with somebody and it had ended. But of course, some normal people could do if pressured, and more usually, it is the behaviour of a narcissist because, of course, the ending of a fling and if they feel slighted, they perceived it that way as a threat to control, and therefore they experience ignited fury, which causes them to respond in a way to try and nullify that threat to control and possibly punish the individual who has caused that threat to control in the first place. And one way of punishing an individual would be to kill them. Again, it's an extreme response, but it's something that could occur with a narcissist. Helen Hewlett, aged 44, of Kings Lynn in Norfolk, paid £17,000 as a deposit to a website used for recruiting contract killers, her trial heard. She was arrested after police linked her to payments made to the site. The court heard her target was a 50-year-old colleague with whom she had become infatuated after a brief affair. Infatuation is a manifestation of the way that the narcissist looks at the world, and of course, having had a brief affair with somebody and then become infatuated is not a normal healthy response that somebody who is a non-narcissist would have. They may be disappointed that the affair has ended, but they wouldn't become infatuated. Indeed, infatuation is generated by the narcissism to continue to cause the narcissist to assert control over that individual, to continue to look upon them in a particular way as being owned by them, believing that the relationship should continue because that individual belongs to the narcissist. The jury in the case was told Hewlett had placed an order on the dark web stating, need someone killed in Norfolk, absence of emotional empathy, adding, it was vital, it looks like an accident. Hewlett and Paul Belton met when they worked at the Linda McCartney Frozen Food Factory in Fakenham and had a kiss in his car. During the trial, Mr Belton said Hewlett had become obsessed with him and over a period of two years until August 2022, she bombarded him with emails and texts urging him to meet her. Obsessive behaviour, sense of entitlement, incessant messaging, which shows a sense of entitlement and an absence of boundary recognition. Hoovering, assertion of control, shows a sense of entitlement in terms of urging him to meet her. The messages also included sexual images and videos of herself. Absence of boundary recognition, use of sex to seduce, sense of entitlement, lack of accountability, absence of emotional empathy. When Mr. Belton left to work at the nearby Kinnerton Chocolate Factory, Hewlett managed to secure a job there too. Mirroring, assertion of control, stalking, hoovering. While at Kinnerton, 
The court heard Hewlett filed two complaints against Mr. Belton to his employers, accusing him of harassment, i.e. projection, homophobia and racial abuse. Attempt to provoke, projection, hoovering indirectly, assertion of control by indirect means, false accusations. The firm told him there was no case to answer and he was advised to go to the police. Asked by prosecutor Marty Blair why he eventually went to the police, Mr Belton said, I just wanted it to stop, I just wanted to be left alone. The court heard the police visited Hewlett and she stopped trying to make contact with Mr Belton for a few days, nullification of threat to control posed by the police visit by going into position of withdrawal. But she resumed emailing soon afterwards, hoovering, lack of contrition, lack of emotional empathy by continuing to engage in the behaviours which you've been told not to engage in. She emailed saying she was sorry, false contrition. She evidently isn't because she's continuing to do what she was doing. Prior to posting the request on the website, Hewlett placed money into an escrow third-party account. In her attempt to find a killer, she gave Mr Belton's home and work address, lack of boundary recognition, and other personal details, the court heard. Hewlett took out a number of loans to pay for the hitman, but investigators were unable to say if the cash went to a potential hitman or if the online killer's market site was a scam. Following the verdict, Detective Inspector Paul Moulton said, This has been a very complex and technical trial with a huge amount of information to consider. This is a rare type of offence, and it just shows the dark web is still not a safe place for criminals to hide. The defendant was cleared of stalking, involving fear or violence to cause serious alarm or distress, but was found guilty of a lesser charge of stalking without serious alarm or distress between January 2021 and August 2022. Hewlett is expected to be sentenced in April. In the course of the case, Judge Moore said to the jury, It comes to this. Was Helen Hewlett a woman scorned, hurt, upset, angered and vengeful at rejection who turned to stalking and soliciting to murder? Of course, such behaviours would show that she was responding to a threat to control, having been wounded by this rejection, and her ignition of fury moved her to behave in a hurt, upset, angered and vengeful way. The judge continued, Or was she rather less than that, vulnerable, needy and something of a keyboard warrior, lacking any wish to harass and kill? Judge Moore said there was little dispute about what the defendant did, but the question was rather whether she did it with the necessary mental element to have committed the offences alleged against her. The judge asked the jurors to consider Hewlett's state of mind when she contacted Mr Belton, who she had worked with at Hain Daniels Food Factory in Fakenham before they both moved to Kinnerton Confectionery, in person, via email, and when she posted on social media, all forms of hoovering, as well as when she made the order on the dark web. She reiterated evidence from the defendant's police interview, in which she said she had no intention that he be killed, and that she didn't believe anything would happen until her final authorization. To my mind, that comes across as a lie. Otherwise, why was she recruiting a contract killer? She said she was finding a way to vent to deal with her emotions. The court heard, again, I would see that as a revision of history and a lie. Did she intend for him to be killed? Did she believe something would happen without her final say? Asked Judge Moore. In summing up, she said that it was the prosecution's belief that the explanation was nonsense, arguing that she intended for him to be killed and had used the dark web giving greater anonymity. They say she paid more than she could sensibly afford, Judge Moore added. She had taken out two loans, one account was emptied and another was overdrawn. The court was told Hewlett had also accessed news sites to read stories on local accidents in which there may have been fatalities. The prosecutions say she wanted to check whether what she understood she had arranged had happened, Judge Moore added. The judge once again reminded them of the background of the case. She said the pair had become flirty with each other after sharing details of their lives, flirtation, lack of boundary recognition, that after an intimate encounter in the factory car park at Haynes Daniels, Mr Belton withdrew from Hewlett. That will, of course, have caused wounding. Mr Belton was made redundant at Haynes Daniels and got a new job at Kinnerton, with Hewlett later starting to work there too, mirroring, hoovering. But when he did not accept her advances, which will of course cause wounding, Hewlett resigned from her job and said Mr Belton's behaviour was the reason, but a grievance procedure rejected her allegations. 
false accusation, assertion of control indirectly. Hewlett then sent a number of emails, hoovering, some apologising, false contrition, and others blaming him for her leaving work, blame shifting, assertion of control. Judge Moore said the prosecution described some messages which said if he continued to ignore her, she would visit him at work as something of a veiled threat, use of threat, hoovering. The Crown say it was now clear beyond doubt that Mr Belton wanted absolutely nothing more to do with her, she said. She couldn't see him at work, couldn't get her job back at Kinnerton, and was becoming increasingly angry, ignition of fury. It was after this that she opened up a cryptocurrency account using her own identification, a point that Judge Moore said was relied upon by the defence. And further emails from Hewlett to Mr Belton, hoovering, and an anonymous whistleblowing complaint, the HR department at his work advised him to go to the police. The judge said Mr Belton had denied misleading or fabricating anything in disciplinary hearings or in meetings with police. In August 2022, Norfolk police were alerted of a post on the online killer's market site and arrested Hewlett. In her police interview, she said she did not want Mr Belton to be killed and did not think it was genuine. Denial. Lie. The money had been in escrow, Hewlett said, which meant she had control over it and in effect it was not actually being paid. It was just a way of me coping, she said. Making of excuses, lie. Judge Moore also told jurors, you must remember these factors. The defendant has an absolute right not to give evidence. Second, there's no burden on the defendant to prove her innocence. It is only if the prosecution make you sure of her guilt. Of course, ultimately, the jury did believe that she was guilty of seeking to hire a hitman and that they found that her behaviour was such that she was guilty of trying to procure someone to kill Mr Belton. It's clear with her behaviours that had taken place over a sustained period of time, a number of years, whereby she was repeatedly hoovering this individual, which felt like harassment to him, as she sought to assert control over him and try and have an intimate relationship with him, that she demonstrates the various behaviours. She shows that there was incessant messaging of him, incessant calling of him. She exhibits a sense of entitlement in that regard. She required an immediate response to her hoovering, she, in effect, was ordering him around by saying that she wanted him to see her. She is self-absorbed in her behaviours. She lacks accountability in terms of the repeated nature of these behaviours, the telling of lies, the fact that she didn't apologise with any meaningful contrition, the fact that she would not address the relationship issues in a meaningful way, but continue to try and spend time with Mr Belton harassing him. There's a degree of grandiosity in her behaviours in selecting a hitman to kill him. She's somewhat dismissive and arrogant, exhibiting haughty behaviours. She's evidently an individual that lacks patience also, and undoubtedly would have a reputation as being difficult. She shows manipulative behaviour. She'll have engaged in flattery, the telling of lies, undoubtedly future faking, triangulation with object and triangulation with person. There will have been pity plays. She engaged in smearing, false contrition, false compassion, withdrawal, denial, provocation, projection and blame shifting. There was the use of threat. There was the use of threat and physical violence. There was the exhibition of fury, the revision of history, denial, argumentative behaviours, deflection, false accusations and accusations out of nowhere. There's poor boundary recognition as evidenced by her incessant messaging of him, her flirtatious behaviours, and the fact that she didn't afford him any privacy. She engages in various aspects of the narcissistic dynamic, which included attempting to monopolise his time, facade management, treating others as an extension of self, mirroring, character trait acquisition, black and white thinking, showing a need to assert control, exhibiting a threat to that perceived, uh, rather exhibiting a response to a perceived threat to that control, objectification of Mr Belton, exhibition of paranoia, repeated hoovering. Accordingly, she also shows a lack of emotional empathy in the way that she kept pursuing the relationship when he didn't want it and then eventually wanting to have him killed. So she shows various aspects that would accord with getting over the relevant threshold to demonstrate that she is, indeed, a narcissist. In this instance... Mr Belton was not killed, but she sought to bring that state of affairs about in form of the ultimate assertion of control over him as a consequence of being rejected by him, which caused wounding. Undoubtedly, she developed an obsession with him, which caused him to continue to enter onto, the, enter onto her radar, most likely 
a malice obsession caused by the impact of his rejection. The malice obsession is relatively rare with a narcissist, but when it does occur, it basically causes the victim to keep popping up in the narcissist's mind, almost like a stuck record, so that the narcissist has to keep a certain control, hence why she kept hoovering and hoovering and hoovering. He was staying away from her. But by moving to a place of work where he was, she would keep seeing him, which would also keep bringing him up on the radar. Another useful opportunity to explain narcissism to you using a live example. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.